Hello friends and welcome to Scarda Lake in Virpazar, Montenegro. I am here exploring for the day. I have been here once before, wine tasting, but what a view behind me. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Anna. I make solo travel vlogs exploring Europe. Today we're in Montenegro doing a day trip from Bar. So I took the train from Bar to Virpazar. Normally that would cost one euro and 30 cents, but today the train conductor person did not come and ask for my money, so I got a free train ride. If you're new to my channel though, subscribe. You're probably not a subscriber. If you've been here before, thank you friend so much. Welcome back. Let's explore another town in Montenegro. I'm in a tank top, folks, and shorts. We got the sunscreen on because I'm looking pale. Oh, Life is already so good. Also, while walking here, when I got off the train, because I've been to Vier Bazaar, I helped two German guests and an English guest make it to at least the, the town or like the city center, which is not even like a city center. It's got one grocery store and all the lake tour, all the boat tour people. But I was quite proud of myself for helping them get there. And then I helped them actually get their directions because I have data on my phone. And if you're wondering, how do you have data on your phone, Anna? you're traveling internationally, I actually use an eSIM. And if you're unfamiliar with this, it's a SIM card that you don't even physically have to put in your card, you just change it in your settings. You have to double check that your phone is compatible, but it's amazing. So if you're interested in that, go to my link below. You can get $3 off your eSIM. It works for regions, for country, for languages. This video is by no means sponsored by them, but I really do love having data all the time, not only to help other people, but I get lost a lot. <laughs> I'm walking up to the fortress. So I got myself some cheese. I'm glad I packed from the hostel. There's one thing travels taught me is just enjoy the little moments. I'm on my way to the Basak fortress, but I've stopped to just enjoy an orange with an amazing view of the lake behind me and it's not like a tourist point, but I got hungry and I have snacks with me. So why would I not eat them now? You know, it's a bit random, but I'm traveling by myself. That's the best part. The Basak Fortress is behind me and if you'd like to enter, it is two euros and 50 cents. Today I'm choosing not to enter it because actually a couple of weeks ago, by chance I attended let's say an open house mini convention of all the wineries in this region which was so by chance and that cost five euros but i got to drink a bunch of wine and also have some food so i would say it's worth the views up at the top there's not much to see within the actual fortress but it's a nice little road and it is accessible by car so i think a lot of people actually come from the wineries and do a little day trip up to the fortress but i'm going to go back down the hill now Lake Skarda is beautiful here. There is also many wineries in the region of Beer Pazar, and I have experienced some of the wine. I'm not gonna pronounce this correctly, but Vrenak is how I would pronounce it in English. Um, it is a great that is local to this region. It is delicious, very high tannins, but quite full body taste. So if you're into winery, it's definitely something to explore. The wineries along the lakeside and into the mountainside. Today, we're just about to explore into the town and not get run over by a car while filming. Oh, he's pulling over. So as I've shared in other YouTube videos, I'm staying in bar while I'm in Montenegro and I'm actually staying there for free doing a World Packers experience. And my host did say that with the boat tours here at Lake Skarda, that you may want to play around with the pricing, a little bartering or negotiating. I guess it's not bartering because you're not exchanging anything. But if one person says X price, be like, mm, no thanks and just go to their neighbor because they're very competitive. It should be about like maybe 10 to 15 euros for a three hour sort of lake tour. <laughs> Look at that beautiful lake. I'm opting out of this. Why, Anna? Why are you not doing experiences? I don't know. I just, I'm really enjoying this freedom of exploring. I'm feeling very cheap right now. I think my goal is to not return back to Canada in debt. So I've chosen to travel in such a different way than I have in times past because I just want to sustain this. I want to keep doing this for a long time and you subscribing and liking this video really helps that. Take 
10 minutes. This says an hour and 10 minutes to hike three kilometers. Or maybe that's a minute and 10 seconds on car. Well, let's go to Gudjin. Gudjin. I also think I saw the American tourist up ahead. We'll see if we connect with him. You know, vibes gotta match. I think that's a big thing. Also while traveling. I feel like every time I come on camera, I have a different outfit on, but we've opted for the hat instead of the sunglasses because I'm getting shreddy on the face. And also the part in the center of my hair always burns. So ladies, if you have, for men too, like your scalp can burn. So we've got a hat on. I've continued to walk on this very panoramic and gorgeous road, which does have this sign that's a panoramic view should you be driving, which I think is a big thing, like rental cars in the Balkans to get from place one to two. Ah, but we see the lookout finally. Fortunately, there's another couple. Gonna ruin their date, but it is freaking gorgeous. I don't need to be on the water. I wanna see the water. This is amazing. Two kilometers, I could be all the way over into this little town, which whose name I don't know. Wow, what a gorgeous place to stay. I'm gonna head back into town now, see if I can get some kind of lunch. Although I've been eating all those snacks, I think I'll be hungry by the time I get done. Maybe an afternoon coffee, because I only had half a coffee this morning. <laughs> Okay, the reason I did have half a coffee is because I was originally going to take a bus to Budva, which is a town north of Bar on the coast. When I got to the bus station, the helper person, oh, that was a big, oh, that's a big bus. The helper person said, oh, the bus is full. And kind of I was relieved, which is sad because like buses really make me anxious and like being by myself, da, 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 da. So I only had to have a coffee because I didn't want to make myself even more anxious on the bus. But then like last minute, a guy paid the driver to get on. So then I was like, wait, is there room? But then I just did not have the energy and mental health discipline to overcome my anxiety. So I just took the easy route and then I almost cried, la, la, la. I'm gonna need an afternoon coffee is what I'm saying. And the sun has disappeared. Mr. Sun, come back. It's gonna get chilly. Anyway, we'll catch you in town. I just walked from the main town down the street and I think I just found the coolest thing and most random thing in Montenegro, a charging bench. My phone is currently charging on this bench because it has solar panels. Look, it says charging. Isn't that insane? Look at this. What a brilliant idea. I love, love, love this concept. So not Montenegrin technology. A Q Ben bench, maybe Q bench. How incredible of an idea. It was a Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina Montenegro, Center for Protection and Research of Birds, part of this project and this pathway. That's so bloody brilliant. I feel like the Balkans are a little bit behind in terms of like technology and obviously we've talked so much about the trash and the composting and the understanding that this is a Western privilege and but like to find that bench, it gives me hope. It is very cool. That being said, on Two, three of my like little day trips to the beach, I have brought bags with me and picked up in total eight, no, maybe 11 bags of trash. It is like a fluff <laughs> of the amount of what is needed to be picked up. But I still feel pretty proud to make the effort and to bring bags and to make sure. And what really makes me feel satisfied and rewarding is that there has been some young kids watching me obviously there's a language barrier but kind of this like what is she doing is she picking up the trash she is picking up the trash and i really hope it makes them think and the next generation think about either throwing out their trash so that was really rewarding do your little part it's not worth just complaining about i need to do something about it and for me that's how i could do something about it now we're gonna go and still try and find lunch <laughs> Perfect 
no one's up on the patio right now. I got local cheese and apparently homemade bread. Although the cheese looks like it literally could have been bought from the Voli across the street here. I've also got olives with it. I've had this cheese at my hostel before. It's very similar. It's almost like a goat feta cheese. Is everything okay? Yeah. Thank you. The name of the cheese is Sear. I put olive oil on it and the bread kind of tastes like focaccia bread, which is a nice combination. 50 cents more, but definitely worth it because I can't just eat all this cheese by itself. I'm probably going to sneak some home. Let's not sneak it. It's mine. I bought it. I put in my bags to go home. <laughs> sure if there's a safer way to get back to the train station but I just walk along the railroad don't tell my mom it's 3 15 there's a 402 train which will likely be late but I took the cheese to go we'll eat it later I better be careful put the camera away I'll see you at the train station I just went to that wine shop in the vineyard vineyard Masanovich. they only sell bottles of wine they don't sell by the glass because i have half an hour to wait for the train which will probably be late and i was kind of like oh maybe i'll just have like a nice little glass of wine but i guess not <laughs> and the train station is dead the train stations here are very discreet and often abandoned trust your gut that you're in the right place there is signage and there is a little schedule so I believe in Bar you can actually buy the tickets at the train station because that is like a hub. It's where the trains end on the line. Um, but I have always just bought the ticket on the train because sometimes they don't check depending like where you sit on the train and timing, etc. So we will just hang out here. But we're gonna end our Veer Pazar. I always wanna say Vizapar. Veer Pazar vlog here. I highly suggest visiting here as I do most places, except you know when I don't like a place. I would say it's a really great place to come and do a day trip. Obviously, if you do a lake tour, you're going to add about two three hours to your visit. If you're going to go to any of the wineries, getting there might be a bit tricky, so I suggest taking a taxi. And I have been told in investigating the wineries, it's often about 25 euros to get three glasses of wine and some meats and cheeses and kind of charcuterie board style. So that's 25 euros, which might seem like not that much money compared to Western Europe. So let's say Italy, France, Spain to do a wine tasting, but for the Balkans, I feel like that is quite pricey. And I even tried to negotiate doing a group deal or like, would you include transportation in that? None seemed to budge. So if I find a hidden gem of something of five to 10 euros, I will make sure to go back and include it in this video. But right now, we're gonna sit and wait. And in the meantime, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and we will catch you in the next vlog. Thank you so much for watching and supporting, and I hope you have an amazing day.